And hi, friends at White Oak High School. As I came in this morning, this afternoon, I said, wow, I blinked two times. I was here in August, and I'm here at the end of your grading period almost. I, I hope that great things are going on for you. I know that they are for your kids. Just to give a brief overview of how we're going to walk through our afternoon and our purpose, uh, first of all, uh, we're going to, we only have two hours, as you know, and I'm going to honor that. So if we don't finish, I want you to hang on to this thought. Every single thing I did in August and everything I'm doing today is for one purpose. It's simply to get you started, get you moving forward so that your teams can carry on with these activities and work and to get you prepared for something very special that your district leadership is planning in terms of Solution Tree, author, uh, one of the authors perhaps being able to come in next summer. I want you to be able to feel when you walk into that training that you have background knowledge, vocabulary, skills, that you're walking into that well prepared. So we're going to talk for a few minutes about what we did last time, what we're going to do today. Let's talk about what's on your table. Let me back up. Each of you, personally, you should have your own copy of a PowerPoint. You should have your own copy of a PLC overview. And you should have a little packet called Four Types of Schools. In the center of your table will be a document, which is a group document, belief statements, slogans, and one that just has what we believe uh, are non-negotiables and what we'll hold ourselves accountable for. You'll work on that as a team. Does anybody not have what they need? Okay, thanks. This quote, discovery consists not in seeking new lands, but in seeing with new eyes. I said it to you last time, I'm saying today. This is not about changing a school. This is not about you having a feeling like you're anything but a great, great campus. You are a great campus doing great things for kids. But every single time that we will be our own worst critics, as I say, to, as we say on my staff, let's uh, have our own, let's confront our own brutal reality. If as a family, as a school family, you do that and you start seeing with new eyes, this is about you getting better and getting stronger. And that's why that quote is there. That's the purpose of it. Today, we're going to talk about our mission, vision, values, and goals. You did some really hard work. I believe it was in August after I left. But at some point between then and now, you've done some hard work and you've come up with department goals. I have those. We're going to bring those together today, and we're going to create a vision statement for this campus. And it's not going to be a vision statement that's long and paragraphs and two or three hundred words. It's going to be something very, very meaningful and powerful to you, something that would be meaningful and powerful to parents and your community. You can call it a mission. You can call it a slogan. It does not matter to me, nor does it matter in the end what you call it. What matters is that you write something that every decision you make on this campus, you can say it to yourselves, and you can evaluate very quickly. Are we going due north? Are we making the right decisions based on what we said we believe? You can post it. Your parents will walk in the door, and they'll know the beliefs of this campus. And we're going to work on that. Uh, I posted some guiding questions on the side, and as we begin to work, those will be the things that we use to guide that process. But a quick review, what you've learned already, and where we're going forward. Uh, in August, we talked about a focus on learning. Your focus on learning, remember, was what I call the four big questions. In the research, it's the four questions essential for learning. What do we expect every student to learn? How are we going to know if they've learned it? What are we going to do if they don't? What are we going to do if they already know it? That was our focus on learning. I, what I will tell you is I'm going to offer you this challenge. If you have not spent time learning more about those four questions and letting them guide your work, 
I'm going to challenge you to do so. I've said at every school I've ever been asked to speak to, Solution Tree did a set of videos that they sell and they asked me what was the most important thing you did and my answer to them then was we've done a lot of really important things but there was nothing more important than using the four essential guiding questions for our planning. What do we expect every student to know? How are we going to know if they know it? What are we going to do if they don't? And what are we going to do if they walk into our room already knowing it? If you challenge yourself and answer all four of those, you will be taking care of RTI. You will be taking care of your academically uh, gifted kids or, or enriched kids. You will be doing everything you need. You'll be learning your text while you do it. Collaboration and common planning. We talked about that a lot. And we went through an exercise on how you might be able to uh, do some common planning, even though many of you have singleton classes. If you still need help with that, even after today, I told Mr. Knoll, I'm just a phone call away. I'm your neighbor. It's not that I have all the answers, but I'm most certainly welcome, uh, happy just to drive out here and visit with a department or him on any given day. You don't have to hire me as a consultant. I'm your neighbor. That's what neighbors do for each other. They help. Results using data. The last time I was here, we talked about looking at data in a very, very refined way and not just at the end of the year, ongoing through the year for formative reasons. So I, I wanted to remind you of each of those things because those are the three big ideas of a professional learning community. And at some point, you will need to do all three of those. Now I want, at this point, I want you to all Pay attention to what I'm saying. It does not matter which one you focus on first. It does not matter if one campus does one first and one campus does another first. It, what matters is those are the three big chunks of working as a professional learning community and you should start wherever it will make the most difference for your kids. I will tell you in my district we started on the four big questions for a very good reason. We needed help, and we needed help quickly for kids that were academically challenged, and we needed to offer more help to kids that needed enrichment. And I knew it would get us there, that that was where we needed to start. But would it matter if as a district or as a campus you started somewhere differently and you said, no, we're going to start by spending a semester looking at results or we're going to spend this year working on collaboration? No. What makes a difference is what you do. It's not where you start, it's where you end. And don't think that you have to be copycat or that there's, a, there's not a right or a wrong first step. There's just a right or wrong if you never keep doing the work to get all of it done. And I hope that makes sense to you. Many, many schools feel as if they're doing something wrong. If they go to a conference or they visit another school that's doing the work of a PLC and that school is started in a different place. You cannot, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, and you cannot do all of it simultaneously at the same time and do it well. So pick the place that you want to focus on that'll make the most difference for kids, the most difference for your campus. Hey, we're going to do a little activity this morning, or this afternoon. Uh, first of all, get moving, have a little fun. Second of all, for you to really think about what you believe before we move in to bringing all those department statements into a mission statement. This is called Four Types of Schools. It is on the screen. You each have it. And I'm going to talk through it with you. And I want, us, I want, as I'm talking, you to really think about these four types of schools. And then you're going to do a little, some activities. School A, learning is based on the student's ability. OK? So that school would believe learning is finite. You're not finding winners and creating winners. You're slotting kids. That kid's either bright or that kid's not. We're not here to create winners. They come to us. They either are or they aren't. School A. School B. Learning takes place only if the child takes advantage of their opportunities. 
Certainly it makes a difference if they take advantage of their opportunities. But learning takes place only if the student takes advantage of their opportunities. So that is, I teach, you learn. It's my job to teach, it's your job to learn, and if you don't, that's your fault. School C, all students can learn something. We'll create a warm environment for them to learn in. High on warmth, it's gonna be a warm, fuzzy, loving place, low on rigor. We're gonna all love one another and we're gonna all be happy, but it may not be a rigorous place. In school D, all students can learn and we will do whatever it takes to help students learn the agreed upon curriculum standards. All students can and we will do whatever it takes for them to learn the agreed upon standards. So that means we're taking responsibility for having standards and supporting students in learning those standards. I want you for just a moment to go, and I want you personally, do not put your name on it. Don't, you don't have to talk to your neighbor about it. I'm never going to know who writes it, nor will Dan, nor will Mr. Gilbert. No one will ever know, okay? I want you to answer this question. Question one, which school did you attend? Did you attend an A, B, C, or D school? Then question two, in which school do you work? An A, B, C, or D school? In which school do you want to work? And in which one do you want your kids to attend? I want you to write your answers and then turn your paper over where it's private. As soon as you have finished, I want you to wad your paper up just like this. So let's just wad it up in your fist just like that. The tables on this side of the room, hold on to your paper. Stand up, go to that side of the room. This table in the middle, go with this side, go to that side of the room. Okay, on the count of three, on the count of three, throw your paper to the opposite side of the room. One, two, three. Okay, everybody find one that is not the one they threw. Which school did you attend? I want you to raise your hand if you've got if you got an A on which school you uh, did you attend. On the one you picked up. Mm -hmm. Read. You're gonna read the one you picked up. Open it up. So a few people attended a school. Learning was based on ability. Raise your hand. Y'all put your hands down. Raise your hand now if your question one was a school B school. Okay, most of the people, if you take the opportunity to learn, good for you. That was where most of us went to school. School C, high on warmth, low on rigor. Who went to a, a C school? A few. Did anybody go to a D school? And a few. Good. Now we're going to do that same thing on in which school do you currently work? I want you to be honest. Obviously, you're not reading your own. Raise your hand and tell me what it says. In which school do you work? How many uh, wrote A? No one. B? Say so we have two Bs in our campus. C? Have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six or so people believe that we work on a campus that's um, warm. And what about a D school? Grand majority of the campus uh, believes we work on a D school. On which school do we want to work? Who wants to work in an A school? Oh, who's paper, who their paper said that? Does anybody, did their paper say that? B school? C school? D school? So one, so, okay, who said a, back up, a C school? Did I say a C school? Okay, so we have a few that wants to work. Uh, all students can learn something and we'll create a warm, pleasant environment. Okay, so raise your hands again if you had C on your answer. So uh, just three or four. And I'm guessing the majority is going to be a D school. Okay. 
Which school do you want your kids to attend? Did anybody want their kids to attend an A school? Or a B? A B school? Someone wanted their kids to, t uh, learning takes place only if the student takes advantage of the opportunities to learn within the school. There's just one of those. C school? A few people want high on warmth, low on rigor. And a D school? Okay, now I'm going to tell you, let's read D again, and you, I want you to think about D when you're thinking about your mission statement, and then I'm going to give you a chance to comment on this. A D school is, and so you just got a little bit of a consensus of this faculty, a sense of what your faculty believes. All students can learn, and we will do whatever it takes to help students learn the agreed upon curriculum standards. Now that's a pretty good belief right there that you just got a consensus on. Does anybody want to make any kind of comment? You're safe with me. You're safe with your administrators in the room. And usually the comment that teachers want to ask me something about is uh, B. Does anybody want to make any comments about a B school? Learning takes place if the students take advantage. Or C. Okay, good job. These are the mission statements that you wrote as a department. You should have a hard copy on your desk. Or on your we're, leading up to, we're leading up to a video series that uh, will talk to us about uh, the importance of creating uh, vision statements that are memorable and that are portable and that are easy for both staff and community to remember and easy for you to make decisions by. So I want you to, as we're reading over these, whether you take a highlighter, a pen, it doesn't matter to me. This is your work. I want you to start uh, thinking about the important words that are in each one of these because we're going to be trying to bring them together today. So language arts. The ELA department equips learners to work confidently and communicate diversely in a rapid changing pluralistic society. Okay. Make any notes you want to make on that one about what it means and what it uh, says to you about a belief. Science. The science department will allow all students to connect scientific laws and theories to everyday experiences by allowing them the opportunity to reflect and elaborate on investigations and discussions. So a lot of collaboration in that one. Math. The mathematics department will provide an appropriate program and learning environment that will effectively meet the educational needs of its students and help them accomplish educational goals that are significant and transferable. Social studies. The White Oak Social Studies Department, through a collaborative effort, provide an opportunity for exposure to diverse historical events and realizing an understanding of those events, positive or negative impact of the world we currently live in, becoming successful citizens will be the end result. Each of your department missions are very, very important to you. And we are not asking that you change your department mission. Not at all. Those are important to you. If you choose to change them, that is fine. But they, need, they are what guide your work and your department and what you believe. Now what we're going to do is take very, four very different department missions and we're going to move to having a pretty concise one for this campus. And I just want to walk down what mission, vision, values, and goals are, uh, what that means and what we need to understand it to mean. And uh, hopefully, we'll get to the vision, values, and goals as well today. So your mission, a simple statement that states your purpose. So you've already, you've already gone through an exercise on what you believe, a whatever it takes school. 
Now you've looked at your department's mission, so a simple statement that states your purpose. This campus's purpose. Your vision, a clear direction for your beliefs. Your values will be your collective commitments. And your goals will be your targets and timelines. These are questions to guide you this afternoon. Describe the school we are trying to create. What would our school look like if it was or is, what does it look like to be a great place for teachers and kids, both. Not just kids, teachers and kids, or staff and kids. What will we look like in five years if we achieve our vision? And then when you really are getting tight with it, have something that you can describe you can describe your vision for your school in 60 seconds on the evening news. I call it a bumper sticker. On your table, you have a piece of paper that says slogans on the top, because I don't know if all schools use them as their mission. When I just go on school websites, I'm going to give you some examples. And when I read these to you, tell me if you know what that school believes. Let's start at the bottom. Motivate, prepare, influence. Maybe, maybe not. The second one up. Enter to learn, leave to achieve. That tells me something. The next one up. Learners today, leaders tomorrow. It tells you that they are, believe they're developing leaders. The next one up is one we did not adopt, but it's on here. It was... HISD, excellence in all that we do. That was a, one that was nominated in our school. The middle one, I'll get to in a minute and I'll explain the meaning to. Let's look at the top. All children can succeed, building the future, students first, hand in hand we all learn, success for every student, engaging minds, Leading, learning, serving, encouraging, supporting, challenging, believing in students' dreams, world-class schools for world-class kids. All of those are from Texas schools that I went on websites and found. Now, I'm not giving you the one in the middle uh, for me to say that it's anything special other than I want one more time to reinforce that it should mean something to you. So I put the one on there that our team of administrators and teachers adopted, and I'll tell you how they got to that, and hopefully that that thought process can help you. HISD, they wanted the name in there. Our district wanted somehow for it to tag our school. Building the future, they wanted it to, uh, the team wanted us to be looking toward the future, always moving forward and, so, and uh, thinking about growth and build, not building as in build, uh, not physical structures, but uh, moving students toward the future. And then at the bottom, one student at a time. It was very, very important to a large number of our staff that we got something in our statement that communicated looking at every child as an individual. So when you took the two strong feelings, looking toward the future, preparing students for the future, individual children, that's what they came up with. So your challenge this afternoon as we move forward is going to be what would you suggest to be for uh, one or two that then we're going to vote on this afternoon for your campus. In the center of your table, if I could have your attention please, in the center of your table are sentence strips. I want you to brainstorm, beat it up, take scratch paper, come up with however many you want to. We're going to take, uh, let's see, it is 206. I'll stop you just for a check in about 25 minutes. I want you to come up with uh, however many you want to. If you want to Google other schools, you can. I just gave you a list so you wouldn't have to do that.
<laughs> when you have one for your team that you believe reflects this whole campus, I want you to put it on the sentence strip. Okay, that's going to be your teams. Then we will take those four, y'all will re-divide, and we'll take those down to two. And when we get those down to two in about probably an hour and a half now, we're going to then vote, and you'll have a campus statement. We may be able to do it sooner than that. So I'm going to check on you in 25 minutes. I'm going to come around to your tables. Your job is to come up with one for the campus that your department is recommending. The ones that I gave y'all, I went to uh, just large school websites in the uh, state and pulled them off. But you might want to, your social studies, let's, yes, where is yours that has it written on it? Right here. So, through a collaborative effort, I see that, y'all believe that, opportunity for exposure, Becoming successful citizens is the end result. Now, y'all, you've already done a lot of work, and you have some real key words there that y'all could tag off of to develop one. Uh, successful citizens and collaboration. Remember your school D that you looked at, too. That was where everybody said it was a school they wanted to work at or their kids to go to. A lot of people get really hung up on what you call it. You know, whether you call it a mission statement or a slogan. I, I don't get hung up on those things at all as long as it is what gives your campus a um, term that you, your kids, Identity. your parents, yeah, I, exactly, that's exactly, and that you can look at and make decisions by. We're going to change how we do this activity and because you are uh, pretty advanced and moving very, very fast. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to let each department spokesperson come to the front and you're going to sell yours. You're going to sell it to the campus. Then, then before we vote, you're going to go back and we're going to have uh, math, we're going to have social studies and science. Y'all are going to go back and see if uh, you want to change yours. We're going to give edit time. We're going to go back and see if y'all can come up with one or if you're going to stay with two. English and math, after you sell yours, we're going to let y'all go back and discuss them with each other, see if you can edit, come up with one, or if you're going to stay with two. I'll only give y'all about 10 minutes for that, and then we'll vote. But the first thing we're going to do is sell our statements. So. The next thing we're going to do now is come to consensus on one of these or combine these. And that should be an incredibly interesting process. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to, uh, I want you to hold on to our guiding questions. Okay, so I'm going to read them one more time. And then we're going to go back and read your school D. Describe the school we are trying to create. Make sure that what you're voting on does that. What would our school look like if it was or is a great place for both teachers and students? School we're trying to create, great place for students and teachers. What will we look like in five years if we achieve our vision? And then be prepared to be able to explain that vision statement or mission statement do it in 60 seconds, what does it mean, and say it to the nightly news. Can you tell everything about White Oak High School in 60 seconds by reading that statement? And remember we came to consensus very early on that you wanted to teach in and wanted your children to go to a D school. All students can learn and we will do whatever it takes to help students learn the agreed upon curriculum standards. So if you can hold those thoughts with you. What I'm going to ask you to do, I don't care if you do it, pull your chairs together, I don't care if you go to the side, I want social studies 
and science to get your two statements you tried to sell to the group. I want you to go together, see if you can come to consensus on one of them, or edit your two into one, either of the two. English and math, I want you to do the same thing, because our next go after you come, go through the editing process, and we narrow it down, then we're gonna go to a vote. And so now, really, really, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about a brand new child parent moves to White Oak, has never been in this school before, and they're looking for a D school. They're looking for a D school. We are a school that will do whatever it takes to help every child achieve the agreed upon curriculum standards. Think if this sticker were on the front door, would it say that? Then picture yourselves. You're in a staff meeting or uh, with Mr. Noel. You've got a difficult decision to make. Let's say that you've got, I don't know, $5,000 to spend, and you've got two things to choose between that you can buy, and they both look great, but you've got to decide which one. Could you look at that statement and it guides you to making those kind of decisions. This is direction we can go. This is what we need to do next. This will, our statement says, all children can learn and we will do whatever it takes to help them reach the agreed upon curriculum standards. Can we make decisions based on that? And would new students and parents know what our school believes and stands by? So social studies and science, Get together, see if you can uh, edit into one or uh, revise, and English and math one do the same thing. One spokesman from uh, this team, Social Studies Stites, who's your spokesperson? Boyette. Math, English, pick one. Who's your... Everyone listen, please. After this, we'll vote and then take a short break before you go in to your beliefs and non-negotiables. Okay, so tell us yours, sell it to the group. Our, uh, our two groups came together and our consensus voted. And the, the vote came to the slogan, we put the stud in student, due to the criteria that it had to be memorable and that's the only one we could remember, so. Okay. <laughs> put it on the table, please. Write it right here on the table, please. <laughs> Math, uh, English. Who's your spokesperson? Someone. We combined uh, theirs and ours, kind of a joint venture. Unlock your potential, believe, and achieve. Okay, stop. What's that? Wait just a minute. So, uh, the first team that presented said their rationale was that was memorable and portable. Tell me what your thoughts were when you were putting that one together. What were my thoughts? Or the team. Them? The team. <laughs> Rhyme is a memory device. Rhyme. What she said. It's memorable. Device. It's memorable. Uh, it would look nice and neat on the uh, on the bumper sticker. I, I think it, it Does resonates. It, That's the word. It resonates. Okay. Uh, so for either of them, does uh, do they convey what you believe? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Put it on the table, please. What I would like then is for, um, I am going to change the rules again. We are going to take a five minute break because you're quite an advanced group. You have green stickers on your table, somewhere some little green dots. You have those? You do, you do. So uh, as we are about to begin the break, each person take one sticker, put the sticker on the slogan that you want to be the one for your campus. You just wrote a mission statement, a simple statement that states our purpose. You just did that. Great job. What you're going to do here, a vision statement, our clear direction and our beliefs. Do you see where the top says what we believe? 
on this piece of paper. You're going to write some of your core beliefs. Our non-negotiables, you see under values, it says our collective commitments. And at the bottom, what we will hold ourselves accountable for. When you have your mission statement, your beliefs, or your vision, your values, which are your non-negotiables. If it is something that is totally non-negotiable to you, then it is a value statement. Non-negotiable, we will treat each other with respect. Non-negotiable, we will have a safe school. Those are non-negotiables. What we believe. We believe every student can learn and will take responsibility for that. We believe that in our school every child should leave prepared for life beyond high school. I'm giving you examples of possible belief statements. What we will hold ourselves and our team accountable for. That is very, very critical for your work as you move forward. And I want you to think about that and don't slough that off because as you move forward working as a professional learning community, your meetings are going to have norms. You're going to be making collective decisions. You're going to be moving forward and being able to look at each other, including administrators that are on your teams, you working cross departments, and saying, excuse me, our non-negotiables say, our non-negotiables say, for example, we will have common planning. Maybe or maybe not. Our non-negotiables say, we will meet one time a week. Our non-negotiables may say, we will treat each other with respect. We will be at all meetings on time. And we will meet the uh, standards of our agreed upon curriculum. Those could be non-negotiables. What you put down here that you're holding yourselves accountable for, that's what you will hold yourself and your team accountable for in order to meet the mission statement you just wrote. Today, you're going to do these as teams. You're going to hand those in to Mr. Knoll. They don't need to have names on them. They don't need anything like that, but you're going to hand them in. At a future time, however he chooses to, in a whether it's a staff development day or he has you work together at some other time, a staff meeting, you all will combine those because I'm sure that there will be some redundancy and I'm sure that there would be some that uh, needed to be edited out uh, or that you all don't agree to. So you're going to come up with them as teams today just due to the short time frame that we have. You. you have examples of some on your table that are already written. I gave those to you. They are belief statements. I'm not suggesting you adopt these. I'm giving them to you to be starters. Belief statements. All, stu all students should be celebrated for their talents and abilities. Our student success is directly related, related to positive and nurturing relationships. Those are belief statements. Collective responsibility. Consistently communicating the district's vision. Yours might say campus or department. Keeping kids first in every decision. Reviewing progress toward goals. Holding one another accountable. Do all of you have these on your table? Yes, we don't. You don't? I'll give you the set that I have in my hand. And non-negotiables. Here's a set of non-negotiables to help you just jog your thought process about what might you be what you might suggest. Professionalism is expected of all staff. All students treated with respect. High quality instruction in every classroom for every child. That's a non-negotiable. Ensure all funding and programs are in compliance with requirements. No excuses. Develop lasting relationships. Those are non-negotiables. I'll give you the, these. I want you to start now. I'll be around to help you and write yours that you want to hold yourselves and your team uh, mutually accountable for. The safe learning environment thing, that, that's a non-negotiable. Very good. Very good.
We'll make that one of your belief statements. We will. Mm -hmm. We believe, but it has to pertain to our mission statement that we've already made, right? We believe, you know, believe and achieve, you know, and achieve life beyond high school, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that one right there is pretty darn the big thing accurate. You have written, agreed upon a campus mission with lots of green dots, Mr. Noel. I'm going to pass it off to your in your possession. Unlock your potential, believe, and achieve. I want uh, someone to tell me uh, when someone walks through the door of this campus, a new student and parent that have never been here before and they want a school D, what will this say to them? You voted on it, so tell me. Unlock your potential, believe and achieve. Go to work believing what you're doing you can achieve. Go to work believing what you're doing you can achieve. Anything else? You may not be there yet, but you will be. Good job. You may not be there yet, but you will be. And everybody has potential. And everyone has potential. Fabulous. Now let's flip it. You're a brand new teacher. You're looking for a school D school to work in. You walk in to make application or to leave your resume. This is on the front door. What are you telling a brand new applicant about White Oak High School? You're here for the kids? That you believe in every student's potential? That their potential as a staff person will be pushed? I want you all to hold on to those thoughts because as I told you, one of these days, you're going to have some decisions to make that may seem small decisions, but this should guide you. For example, uh, I told you earlier you had money to spend. What if, what if all of a sudden you had a staff development day and you had two topics to choose between? You had two presentations. You had, could go to Region 7 and there were two different things. These are the kind of, those are the kind of decisions I want you to be able to go back to your vision, values, and goal, vision, values, goals, and to this, and it gives you a due north. It points you in the right direction. So I, want, I don't want you to see this as just something that hangs on the door. I want it to be, uh, if you have to tweak it after today, do that for it to be meaningful to you. Mr. Knoll, you have your campus mission. Now, let's start back with social studies. Uh, we have way more than we can read out, but I want you just to read me one thing under your beliefs, your non-negotiables, and your mutual accountability statements. Thank you very much. Hmm? You just heard it as a non-negotiable. Science? Science? Can you stand up and say them loud enough we can all hear them, please? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. English? I just need it loud enough that we can all hear. Great. Math? Okay, y'all, I'm giving you a round of applause. Great job. Give yourselves one. You've done well. 
I want whoever the spokesperson was to take those and uh, pass them to Mr. Knoll so that he will have them to combine for your campus, please. Uh, we're going to close with three videos of Andy Stanley's that uh, wrap up this activity. Repeat it regularly, celebrate it systematically, and embrace it personally. And that will be the end of your day. So since that will close you, I want you to know something I've put on this table. You know, I always like to bring ideas to teachers. You have two things from Edutopia. If it's not your, uh, really close to your best friend, it should be. This one is why formative assessments matter. That's for your data and collecting data in a formative way. It's got some great uh, tools in there for you and some great strategies and suggestions. This one, six scaffolding strategies to use with your students. It's got some great information on scaffolding instruction and differentiation. Those are here for you. And I gave Mr. Knoll this a poem off of a blog site. And I'm only going to read you the very last part because he has copies for you and will give them to you at a pointed time. But the last part is called, Are You a Real Team? And it's by John Gordon. And the very last part says, people on a team have an ego and want to be great. People who are part of a real team also have an ego and want to be great, but they give up their ego to serve their team, and a bigger cause. So, how about your team? Are you a team or are you a real team? I want to tell you you're a real team. I've watched how you've interacted with each other. I've watched the respect you have for both each other and for this school and the love you have for your kids. And um, I hope that I've been some small help to you. And it's been an honor just to spend a little bit of time with this great faculty. So thank you for allowing me to visit and be with you. And we're going to end with three Andy Stanley videos. So, again, I want to thank you. I'm honored to get to spend a little bit of time with you. I want to look at you and I want to tell you that you are a great, great faculty. You're a great faculty. Please don't think that uh, myself, you, any other school, at points in time, you're going to need each other as a faculty. At points in time, you're going to be the one that has to live out your vision. You're going to be the one that stands in, you're going to stand in the gap for your kids. And when you live out the visions that you've written today, your mutual accountability statements, I am firmly convinced you will achieve any goal you ever achieve. This is a smart, 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 highly successful faculty that anyone should be honored to be a part of and any parent should be honored for their child to go to school here. I hope that you have a great rest of your school year. I hope I get to see you again. I've told you before, here's all my contact. You have it in your PowerPoint. You call me anytime. I'm your friend, I'm your neighbor, and I'm just a phone call or an email away. So thank you very much.